Dear Indian friends, good morning. I am Angelica Jimbo, and today in collaboration with the Italian Culture Center uh, in New Delhi, I will get you in a virtual tour through the National Gallery of Modern Art in Rome. So I would like to share my screen with you and then we could start. Okay. Okay. So, firstly, I would like to start from the area where the gallery is. Uh, Rome's National Gallery of Modern Art is located very close to Villa Borghese Garden, uh, one of the most beautiful gardens uh, of the city. And this area that is called also Valle Giulia uh, is known for its several foreign academies, for example, the British one, uh, or for example, the Romanian Academy in Rome, as you can see in this picture. Um, embassies and obviously for its museums, not only the National Gallery um, of uh, Modern Art, but also other museums. For example, the wonderful uh, museum, uh, National Etruscan Museum, uh, that you can see in uh, this picture. Uh, Villa Giulia National Etruscan Museum is very, very important and uh, have a very rich collection of uh, Etruscan objects. And the National Gallery of Modern Art uh, is supported uh, through the special autonomy granted by the Italian Ministry of uh, Cultural Heritage and Activities. And it is uh, a, pal a place uh, of research a place of uh, experimentation where uh, today artists, uh, national and uh, international artists, and uh, people in general could stay together and can think about uh, contemporary art languages, exhibition experiences, and firstly, the role of contemporary art and museums today. So the National Gallery of Modern Art uh, hosts uh, today 20,000 um, objects between uh, paintings, um, uh, sculptures, um, drawings, and for example, also installations, and uh, offers today also um, a, a great view on art starting from the 19th century until today. The decision to have uh, a museum in Rome uh, uh, where to collect uh, all works presented in national expositions uh, was the first sign of political aimed at establishing um, a common cultural sense, a common cultural uh, identity, um, symbol of Italy uh, as a new state, obviously. And in uh, 1883, uh, an Italian uh, politician, Guido Baccelli, obtained the King's signature uh, on a decree that established in Rome a National Gallery of Modern Art. Um, as you can see in this picture, this is the um, Palace of Exhibition in Rome that is very close to Termini Station. This was the first place where the collection was um, exposed. On March 1885, the gallery containing three large rooms and three small rooms located on the first floor of this palace, uh, palace of exhibition, uh, opened to the public. So um, the collection obviously increased um, thank, thanks to um, the works of uh, important uh, uh, elements of Roman, Roman and Italian culture in general, uh, such as um, Ettore Ferrari or, for example, Aristide Sartorio, who contributed to incentivize and bring value to Italy's art production. And um, the moment, uh, the, the, an important moment was in 1911, uh, when the architect, the Italian architect Cesare Bazzani, uh, designed the Palace of Fine Arts for the Universal Exposition held in Rome in uh, the same year to celebrate the 50th uh, anniversary of the unification of Italy. And three years later, the palace became the venue of the Gallery 
of modern art, the National Gallery of Modern Art, uh, due to the initiative of another uh, Italian politician, uh, that was Giovanni Rosadi, that aimed uh, at giving a final location to the collection born in uh, 1883. Uh, designed by Cesare Bazzani as the main pavilion for the Universal Exposition, the palace was built to celebrate the Italian culture that obviously the government uh, uh, of the time uh, wished and uh, wanted to promote in that moment. And the building has um, a neoclassical style. The design is inspired by a Greek temple with a Greek stairway to access the pronouns, as you could see, for example, in this picture, uh, two long sides containing pilasters with four pairs of twine columns, uh, decorated with um, a liberty language uh, in, uh, in liberty style, we, I can say. Uh, the upper part of the facade is uh, decorated by three eye relief decorations. Uh, on the left, uh, the procession of beauty and strength by Hermenegildo Lupini. Uh, on the uh, right, the procession of life and work uh, by Adolfo Laurenti, and this is the, the picture of the procession of life and work by Adolfo Laurenti. And uh, in the middle part, the, the central part of the pronouns, uh, you can see the artists and artistic battles by, uh, designed by Giovanni Primi. Uh, the Bazzani building with its uh, wide international rooms and uh, high ceilings uh, hosts the great collection of the gallery, uh, giving a lot of freedom uh, um, in, uh, in the management uh, of the space. Um, after the Second World War, obviously, the palace uh, was reconstructed and restructured, restructured many times. Uh, even the 70s and the 80s uh, saw many important uh, changes uh, um, from the increase made by Luigi Cosenza, for example, to the new library uh, designed by uh, Costantino Dardi, uh, up to uh, the actual changes that you can see in this picture uh, with the new director, Cristiana Collu. And the National Gallery, I, I could say that the National Gallery uh, was absolutely innovative as it had uh, a policy regarding um, all the country. Since its foundation, the task, the principal task of the National Gallery has always been to um, collect, to document uh, works of contemporary artists. And the most import, uh, important uh, curator in the history of, uh, of the gallery was uh, certainly uh, Palma Bucarelli. Uh, in the period managed by her, the operating model uh, still valid nowadays, today, was to uh, increase the collection uh, buying works uh, um, uh, directly from the artist. And this kind of approach, obviously, gave uh, uh, further uh, importance and uh, support to young artists, as well as increase uh, uh, public property, obviously. And <clears throat> after the fall of the fascist regime and the reopening of the gallery uh, to the public, the, um, the curator, Palma Bucarelli, uh, decided to uh, update the, the setting uh, of, the, of the gallery in line with the new criteria uh, used by modern museums. And um, the new setting uh, established by the curator foresaw a round path uh, going clockwise from left to uh, right. Uh, for example, in this moment, the gardens in front of the building hosted for uh, the first time um, a permanent exhibition of sculptures. And this was uh, an important uh, moment for the gallery. Um, Palma Bucarelli uh, worked also with other great uh, people, great persons. Uh, for example, uh, um, she worked a lot with um, the art critic and historian Giulio Carlargan. Uh, in, in general, 
Palma Bugarelli worked a lot also in uh, um, divulging uh, the international art uh, of, the of the, that time by hosting exhibition of artists such uh, international artists such uh, as Pablo Picasso, uh, Pete Mondrian or for example uh, Jackson Pollock. And in 1960 together with uh, the great art critic and uh, Italian historian Giulio Carlo Argan, uh, they are together in this picture, uh, she thought about uh, increasing the body of the building, but uh, the project was completed only 13 years ago uh, when the project was uh, assigned to an Italian architect, uh, Luigi Cosenza. Uh, and Luigi Cosenza um, he implemented the uh, building following an idea of uh, museums of a museum as a place of cultural aggregation. And uh, in line with this idea, the new construction uh, for so a dedicated space uh, for an auditorium and for the gardens, for example. So now the museum, uh, we could say that with uh, Luigi Cosenza, the museum wasn't no longer just a place where to uh, only where to collect objects and uh, paintings in general, but now the, um, the museum was that special place uh, in which to make art. So the, the difference is very important. And uh, we could say also that in this, in this moment, in this period, uh, many galleries, museums and non-profit spaces uh, started playing uh, an active role um, uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, promotions and uh, information. Uh, but uh, in general, Rome's National Gallery uh, of Modern Art acted uh, as um, a pioneer uh, hosting exhibitions uh, of artists, of international artists, as I said before, uh, but also uh, international uh, national artists, sorry, that uh, were considered scandalous. For example, uh, um, Alberto Burri or uh, um, uh, Pietro Manzoni. And uh, the museum today, um, we could say that maintains uh, the same ideas and positions of, uh, of the past. Uh, but something has changed because in uh, 2015, Cristiana Collu, that uh, is the new uh, curator of the Gallery of Modern Art, uh, was appointed general director of the National Gallery. And uh, the current setting of the collection, uh, um, intended as a, an exhibition on time, follow a simultaneous path in which works are placed uh, next to another one, according the assonance, uh, the contrast, and the reference. And um, in this new idea of, of the gallery, uh, even Cesare Bazzani's building has been uh, involved in this uh, new interpretation, uh, establishing uh, a dialogue between the present and past. Time is out of joint is the title, uh, the title of uh, the exhibition inaugurated on uh, October 2016, that uh, um, quoting uh, the words of uh, Shakespeare taken by Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's Hamlet, uh, abandons the traditional concept, the, the traditional idea of time, uh, a non-linear time, but uh, a stratified one, we, I, could, I could say. And the, the works for a new setting, so uh, involved not only the collection, so involved also the, the building. And the works bring back the gallery to um, its original form and eliminate obviously the, the previous works the, uh, inside the gallery. Um, especially for example for in the central area, the central, uh, the, the great hall, the main hall, that now is uh, again a place open to uh, everyone and this is the picture of the, of the main hall uh, of uh, the National Gallery of Modern Art. 
<clears throat> Even uh, the setting of the rooms obviously has been reorganized and uh, um, renovated. Uh, and the renovation uh, does not uh, only regard the, uh, the physical space of the gallery, but also the name, because uh, today we call the National Gallery of Modern Art, uh, Christiana Collu changed uh, the name uh, in the National Gallery. So we have um, a new uh, name, a new idea, I, if I could say in this way. Um, and now uh, we could talk about uh, some of the most important uh, masterpieces that uh, a visitor could uh, see inside the wonderful, uh, this wonderful museum, because uh, it's very, very beautiful, uh, inside the different uh, rooms. Uh, mm, I have to say that now the idea of the new of this new ar arrangement is that um, of time that has to be reset through the uh, a new and uh, an, a, unexpected uh, relationships within the symbolic space of the museum as a, a flow of memories bringing together works of different periods. Now we could start with. Um, uh, some uh, masterpieces and we could start from this sculpture. Uh, this is a sculpture created, uh, sculpted by uh, Antonio Canova, uh, the famous neoclassical sculpture Antonio Canova. Uh, uh, and the title is Heracles and Lycas. And in Greek mythology, Lycas was uh, Heracles' servant. When Heracles' wife, the Yanira, decided to give the, the poison shirt with the Nessus blood to her husband, Heracles, due to her jealousy of another woman, Yole, uh, it was Lycas who brought it to, uh, to Heracles, to mythical hero. And as soon as Hero wore it, he started feeling um, unbearable uh, pain as his body started burning. And this was the first uh, result of his pain. Uh, poor Likas, obviously. And uh, the neoclassical sculptor Antonio Canova sculpted exactly this moment of the mythological violence and sculpted uh, this beautiful uh, marble sculpture. Um, the sculpture was commissioned to uh, Antonio Canova by an Italian nobleman, uh, uh, Onorato Gaetani dell'Aquila in 1795, but uh, the, uh, this work was completed only in 1815 due to constant uh, um, uh, interruptions, probably uh, for political reasons. And the sculptures, this is the room uh, obviously where now you could see the Heracles and Lika sculpture. That is a very beautiful room, I have to say. Um, the sculpture today uh, impressed for his uh, idea of strength, obviously, and uh, especially for the um, anatomical perfection of the body, uh, as you could see in this picture, for example. Now, we could talk about the second um, painting. The second painting is uh, uh, a painting painted by Silvestro Lega, uh, an Italian, uh, a famous Italian painter, and the title is The Visit. So, uh, Silvestro Lega was uh, one uh, of the leading artists uh, of uh, a famous Italian artistic group called uh, Mattiaioli. And uh, these painters uh, uh, were active in Tuscany, um, mostly in the second half of the 19th century. And um, this group of artists uh, believed that uh, um, areas of light and uh, uh, shadows or uh, uh, macchie, which uh, in Italian language means uh, uh, spots or uh, patches, um, were the chief component of their artistic work. The painting, this painting, The Visit, was uh, appreciated since the, since the beginning, uh, especially for its typical Italian language with, um, I could say, with this sense of uh, intimacy uh, for its uh, poetic 
point of view uh, of um, about um, a daily moment, an Italian daily moment between people in uh, an ordinary small Italian village, I, I could say. And now, we could say another beautiful painting. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, a beautiful uh, portrait uh, painted by one of the most influential artists uh, uh, of modern art, Vincent van Gogh. Uh, van, Gogh van Gogh's portrait uh, show, uh, in this case, show a lively young man uh, with uh, this friendly expression, uh, dressed with this um, in bright uh, clothing, and standing in this beautiful and green garden. Uh, the sitter is the garden of a real place, because we know that uh, this portrait, this gardener, was a person who worked in uh, uh, 1889 uh, at the uh, asylum of uh, uh, Saint Paul du uh, Mosul in France, where the uh, artist, where Vincent Van Gogh was uh, a patient. And um, this uh, portrait uh, testifies to the chromatic changes of this period, uh, in, uh, in this period of life of uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Uh, in fact, uh, mm, the artist uh, once arrived in Provence uh, started to, um, to change, started using uh, much lighter colors than the, um, uh, the previous moment, the, the, the moment before. Uh, the work is also uh, an important example of uh, Van Gogh's portrait uh, work. Uh, we, uh, today we have a lot of uh, self-portraits uh, and portraits uh, made, uh, created, uh, painted by Vincent Van Gogh. Um, the, this painting was purchased uh, in, 18, uh, in 1989 and stolen in, mine, in, in May uh, 1998, but fortunately found just a few weeks later. So today, we, uh, fortunately, we could see this, um, this beautiful painting inside the National Gallery of Modern Art in Rome. So another famous, uh, famous painting that you could see uh, in the collection of the National Gallery of Modern Art is uh, a Gustav Klimt painting. Uh, the title is uh, The Three Ages of Woman. And uh, uh, this is a painting that was completed in Austria in 1905 by Klimt, uh, one of the most important and famous symbolist painter, and also uh, a prominent member uh, of the Vienna Secession moment. And the painting is an example of the artistic uh, language, Klimt's language. Uh, in this painting, you could see three different figures, uh, the little girl in the protecting uh, arms of a young woman, and beside them, the old woman uh, um, stands with bowed head. Obviously, uh, every one of them uh, it's, uh, is a, a symbol of, uh, of, the, of the time. The young girl, the, the little girl, the young girl, and the old girl. Three different times of life, obviously. And uh, the beautiful, I think that the beautiful part uh, the, of, the, of this um, painting is the uh, old woman because uh, um, Klimt uh, chose to uh, put her in, uh, uh, in separated from the other two women. Her head is turned away and facing down, and the effect of old age um, are obvious through uh, her sacred skin for example, uh, bloated belly, these prominent veins. So this was done so the viewer can see clearly the peculiarities of these uh, three different ages. 
And uh, now the next painting, the next painting is uh, uh, the Mad Woman. The Mad Woman is a painting uh, painted by Giacomo Balla, and uh, this is uh, the Mad Woman is a part of a series of uh, four canvases uh, known as the Cycle of the Living, painted by the Futurist artist uh, Giacomo Balla, uh, best known also for his uh, for capturing light movement and speed in, uh, in his works. Um, the Man Woman is very, there is a very uh, beautiful painting, depicts uh, um, an unsteady, uh, ambig ambiguously uh, gesturing, clumsy woman. And uh, we, about Balla, we, I could say that uh, Balla was uh, one uh, of the signatories of the manifesto of uh, futurist painters and uh, uh, the futurist movement uh, depicted modern life uh, as a, a dynamically um, unfolding force field of bodies in motion and the mad woman shows very well uh, how much uh, Giacomo Balla spent during his life, during his uh, career, studying uh, the dynamic of movement. movement. And uh, this picture, this uh, painting, uh, um, uh, especially this painting, not only demonstrates uh, um, Balla ability Balla's ability to uh, capture movement in general, but also reflects uh, his great, uh, I, I can say his great uh, empathy uh, for uh, the social outcast of that time. And now uh, we have another great uh, uh, work, okay, uh, that is a uh, Marshal Duchamp, work. Uh, this is the bicycle wheel. Bicycle wheel uh, created by Marcel Duchamp in 1913. Uh, and Marcel Duchamp was um, a pioneer of uh, Dada. Uh, that was a movement that quest questioned uh, long-held uh, assumptions about uh, what art uh, uh, should be and how it should be made. And uh, um, I have to say that firstly, uh, Marcel Duchamp found uh, success uh, as a painter in Paris, but uh, very soon he gave up painting uh, almost entirely and explaining that he was interested in ideas. So with this uh, spirit, uh, in this spirit, he started selecting mass-produced, uh, uh, commercially, uh, commercially available and uh, often uh, uh, utilitarian objects, designating them uh, as art and giving them titles. Uh, uh, these are ready-mates and these ready-mates, as he called them, uh, disrupted uh, centuries of thinking about the uh, artist's role as a skilled creator of original and made projects uh, and objects, obviously. And in uh, 1913, the Champ said that he had the happy, uh, the happy idea to fasten this bicycle wheel to a kitchen stool and watch it turn. The result was this, the first ready-made object created by Duchamp that we now could see inside the National Gallery of Modern Art in Rome. Now, uh, okay, now we have another great, uh, important uh, Italian painters because uh, this is a painted uh, um, created by Amedeo Modigliani uh, that was an Italian uh, painter and sculptor also, uh, who worked mainly in France. Uh, and uh, he is known for his portraits and nudes um, uh, in this modern style, uh, with, uh, characterized by, the, um, by elongation of faces, uh, of necks, and especially for these black eyes. Uh, that is a very typical um, 
mark of the of the in, in the picture in the paintings of uh, Amedeo Modigliani. Uh, in this case, this is obviously is, uh, this is a, a portrait, and uh, this is one of the earliest uh, uh, portraits uh, uh, in a long series of portraits that Modigliani, Amedeo Modigliani, painted in uh, Paris for Anka Zborowska, that was wife, uh, uh, the wife of his uh, friend and uh, poet, Leopold Zborowski. And uh, in this case, the Cubist influence is uh, unmistakable, uh, especially in the asymmetrical uh, way, asymmetrical uh, treatment uh, of the model's uh, features, and uh, in the um, particular um, representation of this fanned out collar over blouse. Uh, the artist's aim uh, to depict the living human uh, form by using few colors and signs uh, can be seen uh, in uh, the simplicity of this portrait uh, with its uh, mask-like face and obviously in these black uh, uh, eyes. And okay, now we could speak, uh, I could speak about another great uh, painting, uh, important painting. Uh, and this is the crucifixion and this is a masterpiece uh, painted by um, a great, the, the great Sicilian artist Renato Uttuso between uh, 1940 and 1941. The painting was uh, presented to the public uh, in 1942 on the occasion of the Bergamo Award uh, and um, caused a scandal and a controversy uh, because some clergy consider it uh, blasphemous and uh, especially the Vatican's uh, concerns likely involved the painting's nudity and especially the modernist, uh, this modernist style of uh, Renato Guttuso's work. And these elements uh, may have seemed uh, inappropriate uh, for a depiction of uh, the crucifixion. Uh, and for example, Another problem was the composition in which Jesus uh, is placed not at the center of the image and his face is uh, uh, obscured. Okay. And uh, I could say that uh, probably also the artist's uh, personal politics uh, as an active anti-fascist and member of Communist Party also may have uh, contributed uh, to the Vatican's critic, obviously. Uh, Guttuso, with this uh, beautiful painting, Guttuso wished to create a strong connection between the history, uh, the Catholic history uh, of uh, crucifixion and the, 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 his actual history, uh, the war, especially the, that moment, the war, aiming to represent Christ uh, as as a scene from today, as he said, in, the, in that period uh, yeah, of time. So now we could see another, um, I don't know if, I, if, if it's correct to say uh, painting or sculpture, because this is a work created by Lucio Fontana that was uh, the founder of uh, spatialism. And uh, the works of Lucio Fontana are very, very difficult to, to describe uh, because they are like, uh, um, I could say it's a mix between uh, a sculpture and a painting. Uh, and it's very, very interesting in this sense. This is spatial concept waiting, and spatial concept waiting is uh, one of a series of works uh, Fontana made uh, in Milan uh, between uh, 1958 and 1968. And uh, these works, uh, which all consist uh, of uh, a canvas that has been cut uh, either once or multiply, as uh, in this case, are known as cuts. Uh, that in Italian is um, um, we said tagli, K 
cats is Tai Yi. Uh, considered uh, together, they are Fontana's most extensive and group uh, uh, of works, uh, and they have come to be seen as emblematic of his uh, gestural uh, signs, gestural aesthetic. Uh, each cut was made by a single gesture, and this is Lucio Fontana, uh, a single gesture using a sharp blade. Uh, from the earliest works uh, in the series, he uh, always wrote uh, the word attesa, that uh, meaning, uh, uh, means uh, expectation, um, to, uh, on the back of all the canvases. Uh, um, and we could say uh, that in this case, destruction and creation were bound together uh, in these works. Uh, and the same gesture that negated the canvas as a pictorial vehicle uh, also opened a new uh, possibility. A new possibility uh, opened up uh, its cultural possibilities uh, to the canvas. Now, we could see another uh, work, uh, in this case, uh, we could say that it is uh, a, um, a sculpture, obviously, a great a big sculpture, and this sculpture uh, is a, a sculpture created by Pino Pascali, that probably was the greatest contemporary Italian artist, uh, and uh, Pascali was only 30 years old, when he passed away. So his life was very, very short. And uh, also his career was very short, but was short, but was very uh, intense. He graduated in Rome uh, and in 1965, he held for the first time his first solo show in a prestigious gallery uh, of Rome. Uh, the gallery was uh, uh, La Tartaruga. And in this case, uh, it was uh, through this exhibition uh, that uh, um, Pino Pascali showed for the first time his uh, uh, fake sculptures, uh, a series of uh, shaped canvases that first uh, uh, appeared to be uh, a solid architecture, and, uh, uh, but actually uh, they are painting that present uh, abstract form, uh, suggesting, for example, uh, animals, uh, like uh, as in this case, for example, di dino this dinosaur, or uh, plants, or for example, um, uh, land landscapes. So uh, with its work, uh, uh, and with uh, this work in particular, um, Pino, Pas Pino Pascali translated the word uh, of imagination in uh, uh, monumental forms uh, and, and essential sculptures. Um, he, make, uh, he makes these sculptures uh, using uh, poor materials, like, for example, uh, obviously canvas or uh, wood or steel, and this is an important part of his works. Um, and um, with this research, he tried to uh, create a clear language, uh, a clear, uh, and, and firstly, objects that everyone could recognize immediately. Now, the last work that we could see that is very important because, uh, as I said before, Palma Bucarelli was very interested to um, uh, international artists. Uh, uh, so Jackson Pollock, Jackson Pollock was one of them. Uh, this is a Jackson Pollock uh, painting. Uh, Jackson Pollock was an influential American painter, one of the most important, maybe, uh, American painter, uh, contemporary American painter. And uh, he was a uh, the major figure inside the abstract uh, expressionist movement. He was widely uh, noticed for his technique. In fact, in, fact, uh, in uh, uh, 1947, uh, his drip style uh, marked by the use of sticks 
or travels of uh, or knives to drip and splatter paint as well as pouring paint directly from the can emerged. And in a section, as you can see in, uh, in this picture, there was something from the um, surrealistic idea, surrealistic world of the subconscious and automatic painting. Uh, this kind of technique, uh, the Pollock drips, uh, the also calling uh, um, uh, action painting, uh, changed deeply the potential, the potential uh, of a contemporary art, uh, changed deeply contemporary art. And as I said before, in 1958, Palma Bucarelli with uh, Giulio Carlargan hosted for the first time a first uh, solo show, uh, uh, Jackson Polo, Pollock solo show in Europe inside the National Gallery of Modern Art in Rome. Uh, so this is um, one of the three paintings uh, painted by Pollock uh, that you could find inside the National Gallery of Modern Art uh, of, uh, uh, of Rome in Rome. So this was the last work and uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed obviously and thank you very much uh, to everybody uh, from me and uh, I hope to see you soon. Bye. Thank you very much.